when we react a strong acid and strong base together, we're going to look at what that reaction really looks like. So we said just a second ago that we would take that H3O plus that comes from our hydrochloric acid and the hydroxide that comes from our sodium hydroxide, react them together and make water. If you look at that reaction, that's the opposite of how we wrote the auto ionization of water in our last chapter, where we said that water molecules can self ionize. If you had one water molecule, reacted it with a second water molecule, that you could get a proton transfer that happens between those two water molecules, that it can ionize itself. But when we wrote it that way in our previous chapter, the water molecules were on the left-hand side and the H3O plus and hydroxide were on the right-hand side. So it's kind of flipped from how we wrote it before. Our reactants became our products. Our products became our reactants. So if I asked you what the K value was for this reaction, since we flipped our reactants and products, we would need the inverse of Kw. So you might remember Kw's value as being 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, that not many water molecules will ionize. In fact, most of them stay together as molecules of water, not hydronium and hydroxide ions. So if the reverse is how this reaction is written, we have the reverse K. Um, instead of 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, we have 1 times 10 to the positive 14th, a very large K, very products favored. So if we were to kind of replace that even arrow there at the top, instead we're going to have a big arrow pointing to the right, a little arrow pointing to the left. But what about those products of a strong acid-base reaction? Do they impact pH? So this is where that last chapter that we were just studying comes into play, where we're going to be looking at pHs during titrations and say, do these ions matter? If we make certain ions, are those certain ions going to have an impact on the pH of a substance when you're at the equivalence point? Soon, we'll get to reactions where you're not at the equivalence point. But for right now, it's what if you have equal amounts, equal moles, it matches the stoichiometry, and you were to perform the reaction, and you look at the products of that reaction, do the ions that are formed have an impact on your pH? So here's where your last chapter is going to come into play, where if I gave you a salt sodium chloride, and we put it in water, and I said to you, what would the pH be? Would it be less than 7, greater than 7, or equal to 7, and why? Hopefully, you're saying to yourself that the pH would stay at 7, that the sodium ions and the chloride ions do not have an impact on pH, because the sodium ion is the cation of a strong base, sodium hydroxide, and chloride is the anion of a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. So keeping in mind that we're talking about the reaction at the equivalence point, on the next slide we're going to draw a picture of what would be inside that flask at that point of a titration. So keep these, uh, the, that top reaction there in your head. So we have the H3O plus and the chloride are coming from our hydrochloric acid. And the sodium ions and hydroxide come from our sodium hydroxide. Then the, those guys are going to combine. We're going to get some water molecules. And the sodium chloride, it's still in there, right? There is spectator ions, so that's why we don't show them in a net ionic equation. But what I've shown you there is the complete ionic equation. Show me everything that's inside that flask. So if I asked you to draw a representation of what's inside the flask when you hit the equivalence point. So here's an empty flask. If I said, what's in there? Well, there's a couple different things in there. There's water. 
and there's our salt. So where does that come from? Well, if we're at the equivalence point, we don't have any limiting or excess reactants. If we're at the stoichiometric point, the equivalence point, that means that you don't have any chemical that gets used up before the other. They run out at exactly the same time. So we don't have any hydrochloric acid left over. We don't have any sodium hydroxide left over. We have products only. And if you look back on this previous slide, if I just back up just a second, the products only are water and salt. So there's the water, there's the salt. So the Na plus and the Cl minus, they're in there, but we don't show them in an ionic equation since they're spectators. The only things in the flask after a strong acid, strong base reaction are water and ions that don't impact the pH. The only thing the water can do is auto-ionize producing equal amounts of your H3O plus and OH minus. And those sodium ions, those chloride ions, they're not going to mess with the H3O plus or OH minus concentrations. When you have those cations or anions of weak acids or weak bases, they can mess with your pH, right? We saw that in our previous chapter. But in the flask we're looking at right now is strong acid, strong base. We make water and the things that don't affect the pH of the water. And indeed, that will happen anytime you mix stoichiometric amounts of strong bases with strong acids, you're going to get a neutral solution, pH of 7 at 25 degrees, every time, because you won't have any limiting or excess reactants. In fact, you won't have any reactants left over. It will be products only, and those products are water and ions that don't impact the pH. So we have a neutralization reaction, pH of 7.